Hi everybody, it's Jen Sheffer. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we are looking at how we can create a lesson in Nearpod. So you will open up Nearpod and you will go to my library. And there are two places where you can create a new lesson. You can click up here in the top right hand corner and you can choose lessons, uh, videos or Google Slides, but um, you can also click right here where it says create and the same menu choices appear. And so I'm going to click on lessons. I tried this with Google Slides with the Nearpod add-on and I personally uh, found it to be a little bit slow. So um, that's why I'm going to start by showing you in this tutorial how you can upload a pre-existing Google Slide presentation in Nearpod and you won't have to use that add-on. So it'll make more sense as I uh, go through this presentation here. But what you're going to see is you start with an untitled lesson and we're gonna change this to the seven, seven functions of marketing. I used to teach marketing and business at the high school level for many years and that's going to be the basis of this example. So now what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna click on add slide and I'm brought to this screen where I can choose the first tab that is selected here is content. And you can see all the different types of content available to me in Nearpod. It's not just static slides. There are 3D um, images, there are simulations, um, virtual field trips. Um, so there's quite a bit of multimedia content to choose from. So for this tutorial, we're gonna look at slides and the different types of formats available to us once this opens. You're going to see on the right hand side there are various themes available to us that have different background colors, they have different font styles and colors as well. So as you build your presentation you get to just to determine the appropriate theme. The other thing I wanna show you is here at the bottom, they have uh, background choices for you and they're powered by Google uh, for an image search. So if you wanted the background of your presentation to be an image, you can simply search a key term. I'm gonna search marketing. I can click the check mark and click save. Now what I can do here on the right hand side is I can use this zoom tool to zoom in or out as necessary. If I don't like that image, I can simply click on the delete icon and that image will be removed. The other thing I can show you down here at the bottom are the different layout options that are available on a slide when you're designing your presentation. You have four different options. You can do just one element so you can click on that plus sign, uh, plus button, pardon me, and you can add text. You could have a video as your cover slide. You can have an image like I just demonstrated, or you could do an animated GIF. So if I wanted to do the GIF, I can just type in marketing. And I really like this because it's built right in and there's movement right away on this cover slide for my students to see. And I think that's going to get them curious and it, it's going to engage them right from the start. So I can add that at any time. If I want to change the layout, I'm going to go back to layout. Another option I have is to add a title. So I can click and I can add the title. This is going to be about the seven functions of marketing. Then I can use that zoom tool to adjust this. And maybe the, the basis of this presentation is really going to focus on digital marketing. I'm going to go back to the layout. I can add a title with two elements. So you could have a, an animation on one side. On the other side, you could have text. Um, you could have a video on the other side. And then last but not least, you could have four elements on your cover slide. So if you have four learning objectives, if you want to add your um, I can statement, if you're at the elementary level, Whatever um, you decide is appropriate for a cover slide to really get your students excited about their learning and to get them curious about what you'll be um, teaching them, you get to choose that particular layout. So I'm gonna make sure that that is positioned appropriately. The other thing I wanna do is this orange theme here looks really nice and I think it actually complements some of the color that is used in that GIF. So I'm going to change that to um, that particular theme. The other thing that you can do 
on your cover slide here in um, Nearpod is you can add an audio file. So if I click on this, I'm going to click on audio recorder. I already received a, a um, pop-up that asked Nearpod uh, permission to use my microphone. So you're going to want to make sure you click allow so that it accesses your microphone. Then what you can do is you can click on that audio button to start your recording. In this Nearpod lesson, we are going to be exploring the seven functions of marketing. You can say whatever you need to say, and then you can click on save, or you could delete that audio if you don't want to use it. It's going to upload that recording. And again, there's another way to get your students excited about what they will be learning in this lesson. So if I click play, in this Nearpod lesson, we are going to be exploring the seven functions of marketing. So I can preview that. If I like it, I can keep it. If I wanted to, to delete it, I can click on the delete icon. So there is my slide. Um, I've got that animated GIF. I've got some audio embedded. And then I have, last but not least, the preview button. So I can see what this is going to look like from the student side. So again, it's not a static presentation with just text. It's uh, some animation, it's some audio, it's getting the students excited, hopefully um, about their learning. So I'm gonna click that uh, back button. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna move my webcam here. I can now click on save and exit change lesson theme. The new theme you selected will also modify the other slides you created in the lesson. This is just my cover slide, so I'm gonna click on save. Now it's not like Google in the sense that it's cloud-based and it's saving automatically, but I will say the next time you log in to your Nearpod, if you haven't saved the lesson, the lesson will still be there with your slides and it will say unsaved. You will see a green icon that will say that it has not been saved, so you won't lose your changes, but I would encourage you to save um, often, save the presentation often. So if you needed to delete the slide, you will notice that there is a little um, orange check mark here. The delete slide button is right there, so you can delete the slide or you can copy that slide. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna upload some files. I wanna upload my um, existing marketing functions presentation. So I get to choose right here from my Google Drive and it's going to open up my recent files or I can just search by the name of my file. It's telling me um, to just wait a few seconds and if it doesn't open, um, I can click here, but it will open in just a moment. A new window will be um, opened automatically. It's gonna pull into my Google Drive files, allowing me to select that seven functions file. So obviously the larger our files are, the longer they take to load. So just keep that in mind. And that seven functions presentation is right here. So I'm going to click on it. Double click on it. And then it's going to ask me, do I want to upload these as individual slides? I'm told that I can upload these files as a series of individual slides or a scrolling slideshow. Now I wanna upload these as individual slides because I can integrate in between slides various activities such as polls or open-ended questions or quizzes. So I want these to upload as individual slides. So this is gonna take a few moments, but um, once it loads, you will be able to see inside my lesson builder here that I'm creating, all of those slides are going to be uploaded. It does give me this um, warning down here or this notification here in the um, bottom right corner to sit back and relax. My file will be ready shortly. I can continue editing or I can take a brain break, which you might want to do that. But it's telling me that while it's processing, I could add additional content. But as 
um, I'm finishing that statement. Here are my slides. They've all been added. So pre-existing Google slide presentation has been added as individual slides. So that did not take very long. Um, if it was a larger presentation, it might have taken longer. But as you can see, here they are. Now, if you wanted to move or reorder the slides, I could just click on them, click on a slide and drag and drop. It has a drag and drop interface. Um, now my slides are in a particular order for a reason. So I need to move this marketing ma information management slide there. That's exactly where it needs to be. So it's a drag and drop to reorder your slides. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on add slide again. And again, I'm brought to content where I could add an additional slide. Or if I have all of the slides that I need, I can start adding some interactivity. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on activities. And in the next series of tutorials, I will be showing you how to create all of these different types of activities and how to embed them into your Nearpod lesson. So I hope this has been helpful in terms of learning how to create a slide from scratch, the various layouts you can use, um, as well as adding audio, adding animated GIFs, and also how you can go about uploading pre-existing slides from Google, from your Google account, um, without necessarily using the uh, Nearpod add-on. So I hope you found this to be intuitive. Um, there's a blank slide here, so if you wanted to add something else, you could, um, but hopefully um, you feel confident that you could, in fact, create a cover slide and or upload a pre-existing presentation so that you can then add interactivity with Nearpod. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and stay tuned for more. I'll see you soon.